It's not a mystery that Naofumi is kind of OP, but what is are the abilities that make him that way? The powers and skills inherent to his shield that we rarely, if ever, get any sort of explanation for. Yes, we do see the times when he's receiving these upgrades, but the actual specifics of what they do are a lot more interesting when they're not actively hidden from us. They actually help to add depth to Naofumi's character since we start to understand why he decides on certain shields in certain situations. So, just as I like to do with every other isekai protagonist, let's take a look at Naofumi and everything that makes him so powerful. A spoiler-free look into every ability and skill he's gained since the start of the anime. But first, this video is sponsored by Webnovel, the number one app for digital book sales in the United States as well as home to over 200,000 original works by 100,000 plus talented authors. The one I've been personally enjoying the most though is the isekai-like story of the legendary mechanic. A classic tale of the protagonist ending up in the game for real, but this time as an NPC who must restart the game completely fresh. What makes his particular character so interesting though is that most of his time playing before was spent boosting other players, making him this extremely skilled gamer who knows both the ins and outs of how to become stronger. Kind of like how it was in SAO. So, if you want to get a taste for one of the many stories web novel has to offer, then I highly recommend checking out this one. There's numerous stories just like it that are available both as comics and novels. Plus, with a massive community of over 75 million, over 50,000 comments are made daily to make discussions that much easier. You'll have no problem finding people who are passionate about the same type of content you are. So, if you want to explore a whole new world of quality original content, then be sure to use the link in the description to download Web Novel for free today. But now, let's get back to the video. In order to understand how Naofumi's different shields give him power, we first need to understand how the base version works in general. There's a few fundamental aspects regarding the legendary shield itself, which makes explaining it a whole lot easier. The first is the weapon ability that comes from using it, then the next are the equip bonus and equip effects that come from mastering it. So, it's after Naofumi's acquired a brand new shield that it's only a matter of time until he'd unlock that shield's unique skill or passive bonus, both of which, once unlocked, will remain usable forever regardless of which shield he has equipped. When it comes to that specific shield's equip bonus or equip effect though, those are the unique passives and abilities that become active only when that shield is equipped. So, what you have are permanently unlockable abilities gained after leveling with a certain shield, then equip bonuses and effects instantly and only available when a specific shield is equipped. It's an aspect of the legendary weapons that really influences how Naofumi decides to approach all the fights he gets into, creating this additional layer of depth since we actually get to see his Guildmaster experience in action. Now, if we start from the very beginning, aside from his base shield which passively gives a minor defense buff of plus 3, there's a whole selection of other smaller shields he'd earned while leveling in the forest. There's the colored shields he'd gotten from the balloons, the mush shields which were from the lumush monsters, then the medicine shield from the absorption of materials he'd made using abilities from the previous shields. You see, by using the compounding bonus that came with having the green mush shield equipped, Naofumi was able to combine certain materials together to make new items resulting in what was essentially an assisted crafting system, limited only by the recipes Naofumi had added to his inventory. So, by using this to create a healing medicine, Naofumi was then able to absorb it and unlock yet another branch of shields, a lot of which originated from the base leaf shield that Naofumi had unlocked first. A quick thing to note about that though was that, because this shield has an equip bonus that increases the quality of both absorbed and collected materials, you'll often see Naofumi switch to it when cleaning up the aftermath of the monsters he's faced. That way, he can make the most out of all the resources he's acquired. If we fast forward to when Naofumi had reached level 8 now, his arsenal would consist of various egg shields and energy shields. The former had several bonuses more focused on crafting and utility, while the latter provided improvements to certain status abilities like stamina or soul power. Now, if you're not familiar with what soul power is, well, just like how mana is used for the casting of magic, soul power is the type of energy the heroes use to activate their skills. Every weapon skill we see any of the heroes use requires some level of soul power in order to be cast. That being the case, I'm sure you could see the fundamental problem in having three of the four heroes rely solely on skills alone. That's the reason Naofumi is trying so hard to fix that. In any case, it's after the two Usapil shields Naofumi had gained from the rabbit that he then comes across the sharpening shield and its unique attribute of the equip effect. Remember, these are the abilities that can only be used when that specific shield is equipped. So, for this particular case of the Sharpening Shield, because it was unlocked via the absorption of a whetstone, it makes sense then that its equip effect would be the automatic sharpening of whatever weapon he wants, 
providing for this useful piece of utility that made maintaining Raftalia's sword extremely easy. Now, these past few shields haven't really been anything we'd see Naofumi use in combat, but the next is one we see him use almost all the time. Well, not so much the shield itself, but instead the unlockable skill, Airstrike Shield. You see, this was an ability that would prove itself to be far more versatile than Naofumi could even imagine here. Aside from instantly creating a barrier anywhere within a 5 meter radius of himself, this skill could also be implemented as a foothold or a barricade. It could be used as a physical platform and rotated to any orientation Naofumi desired, making for this skill that was both effective on defense and utility. Now, I know in the anime it also shows him tossing it like it's some sort of projectile weapon, but I don't think that's ever actually happened before. The novel tends to keep it as this stationary object, something that can't move from its position after it's deployed. This may not be a big deal for some, but the idea that Naofumi can use Airstrike Shield to inflict damage does go against the whole concept of him being unable to do so. I mean, the whole shield hero aspect does revolve around him lacking any offense whatsoever. So, for the anime to disregard a core theme like that, well, let's just say it feels a bit odd sometimes. Getting back to Naofumi's shields now, it was only a little bit after acquiring the rope shield that his encounter with the dog would unlock the two-headed black dog shield a new type that comes with an equip effect in the form of a counterattack. As I'm sure you know, it's after this specific shield has been hit that the two dogheads come to life and charge the enemy in an offensive flurry for 30 seconds. What you may not know though is that this shield also comes with an equip bonus called Alert Shield, a rather useful ability that detects if there's any enemies within 20 meters of him. So if he was ever traversing a dungeon or a cave, this ability would do well to detect any enemies that might be lurking in the dark ahead of him. Now, it was after another week of leveling that Naofumi would gain various shields more focused on utility than another unlocking the commonly used shield prison skill. We're not sure what exactly he absorbed to gain the pipe shield it came from, but it's definitely one of his most used skills when in combat, mainly because of its ability to protect himself from oncoming attacks, as well as entrap enemies in a highly durable cage of shields. The only downside to a skill like this is that the cage itself only lasts for 15 seconds. So, should now Fumi face any opponent with high levels of sustainable damage, then Shield Prison wouldn't be useful in trapping them or protecting himself. Now, right before the beginning of the first wave, now Fumi would come across what's called the Animal Needle Shield, one of the very few shields that actually goes towards boosting his attack. Yes, it does have a counterattack ability similar to that of the Dog Bite Shield, but its equip bonus also boosts his base offense stats as well meaning that if he does ever choose to fight with this shield equipped, then it's very possible he could do minimal amounts of attack damage with it. As for the needle shield counterattack, this simply shot out several porcupine-like needles whenever the shield was hit by anything. Combine it with the effects of the bee needle shield from a little bit later, and those projectiles would start to inflict status effects like paralysis and poison. So, with that being all his shields from prior to the first wave, the next series of shields gained were from the slave curse ink Naofumi bought from the slave trader, an incredibly useful asset that Naofumi's been taking advantage of the entire time. As a set of shields that allow him to directly improve any of his slaves' rate of growth, it's very possible these could be some of his most broken mechanics. You see, not only does the maturation adjustment increase the rate at which they physically grow, but the status adjustment also gives them a lot more stat gain per level. So, if Raftalia was only getting, say, plus 2 attack per level, with this new status adjustment bonus she'd now be getting plus 4 or something. It's an extremely powerful ability that has actually allowed Raftalia and Philo to outscale all the other heroes. While they weren't making use of any sort of growth adjustments, now Fumi was doing everything he could to optimize it, resulting in his party being much stronger than probably all the other heroes combined. So, whenever you see a new member join now Fumi's party, You'll often see him offer the option to become his slave because it's basically a fast track to becoming significantly stronger. Skipping ahead to after the first wave was finished, and Naofumi would acquire several shields from the remains of all the monsters he'd fought. Out of the 11 he'd gained though, only one stood out as having stats good enough to use in battle. And that's the Chimera Viper shield we see him using for the greater half of Season 1. As a shield earned from the remains of the first wave's boss monster, it was only natural for this to come with its own equip effect, equip bonus, and unique skill, all of which seemed rather useful in a combat situation. What stuck out to Naofumi the most though was the shield's exceptionally high defense rating along with its unique skill, Chain Shield. This would be the foundation for a lot of the combos we see him use later on in the anime. 
by using a variant of the skill called Chain Shield Attack. Now Fumi could change the type of shield certain skills were made up of and transform them into a version that allowed for a counterattack, something I'll talk more about once we get to the Shield of Rage. As for how the base version worked, well, that just allowed him to change to any shield instantly. Every 30 seconds now Fumi could instantly switch to any shield he wanted, making for the use of shield specific skills a lot more manageable. Aside from that though, the Chimera Viper Shield did also have a counterattack of its own. Well, two actually. The first was one called Poison Fang in which, once attacked, the snakes on the front would come to life and poison the person who did. Then the next was known as Hook, and this would have the snakes restrain the target instead of try to bite them. It didn't really do any damage, but it was a useful grab that could be used on pretty much anything within 2 meters of him. But yeah, that's everything up to right after the first wave. There's quite a lot of utility, but not so much on the offense yet. Out of all the ones we did see though, I think the main thing to focus on would be the significant impact of the Slave User's Shield. That's by far one of the most powerful shields in his arsenal. Now, I was planning to do all the other shields as well, but I don't think my voice would be able to handle it right now. So I do apologize for cutting this video short, but I really just want to get my voice back to 100% before anything else happens. Before I go though, I do need to thank everyone who wrote all those kind comments through YouTube's new Super Thanks feature. It really does mean a lot when I see just how much you guys care about the content. So, just like how it was last video, if you want your name to show up at the end of the next video, then feel free to leave a super thanks comment as well. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. But anyway, as always thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!